Well, the past few weeks look to have brought a shift in strategy for Western allies toward Ukraine. More and more countries are stepping up to give Kyiv much heavier weapons than before. After armored vehicles from France and Patriot air defense systems from Germany, the UK announced this week it will provide 14 Challenger 2 battle tanks. But just how significant is that decision, really? To find out more, let's bring in France 24's chief foreign editor, Rob Parsons. Rob, first of all, what's been going on behind the scenes to make this possible? I, th I think what's been happening is a reassessment on the part of the Western supporters of Ukraine uh, of the situation. Because if you remember initially, obviously there was support for Ukraine, but there was fear on the part of uh, NATO and the alliance that if they gave too many weapons, weapons that, could, for instance, could be construed as being offensive, that NATO could end up being sucked into the conflict as well. And there was particular fear uh, that if, we, if red lines were crossed, Russians perceived red lines were cr crossed, that Vladimir Putin might be tempted even to press the, the nuclear button. That fear seems to have been receding in recent months. Uh, and there's a a reassessment, I think, too, of the capabilities of the Ukrainians. One of the fears at the beginning was that if NATO, for instance, gave advanced weaponry, uh, offensive weaponry to the Ukrainians, that if they weren't capable of using it properly, that weaponry could easily fall into the hands of the Russians, and it would be a wasted effort. So I think two, those are two key factors uh, that, have to, that need to be considered. The other one, I think, too, is a, a growing sense among, uh, among supporters of Ukraine that this is not just Ukraine's fight against Russia. This is the, the fight of the West for the defense of its values. If Ukraine loses, the West as a whole loses as well. So the, the, what is happening, I think, uh, particularly at the moment, is just the, uh, how can the West really provide the sort of weaponry now that Ukraine needs to not just avoid defeat, but to defeat Russia? Uh, and the, the focus is turning now to heavy weaponry, in particular tanks, uh, long-range artillery and infantry fighting vehicles, and a crucial meeting coming up at Rammstein in Germany uh, on Friday, uh, at which... These particular issues will be discussed. Key to that is how will Germany respond to the request for tanks? Germany is the, 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 the constructor of most of the battle tanks that are in European armies, the Leopard 2. That is what the Ukrainians are asking for at the moment. That is what the Germans have been resisting up until now. But the fact that the UK agreed to send its Challenger tanks sets an initiative. You know, the ice has been broken. So there is a, every possibility, I think, that Germany will give the go-ahead, if not to supply them itself, to allow other countries which have them, like Finland, like Poland, and so on, to do so. So why is all this happening now? What's the thinking behind this uh, change of mind? Well, I, I, essentially, I think the, it, the, the reason is that the battlefield uh, is in a state of stasis. Things aren't moving particularly. Uh, in the Donbass area, we see the Russians attacking Bakhmut and Solidar has been in the news in recent weeks. If you look on the map here, Bakhmut and Solidar. Uh, but they haven't been making very much progress. The Ukrainians seem able to hold them down, but they're not being able to push them back either. Same if you look further north at Svatove and Kremina. These are two towns where the Ukrainians have been pushing, have been making progress, but don't seem quite able to break through the Russian defences. What would make the difference is if they had heavy weaponry. Tanks, artillery, long-range artillery, and infantry fighting vehicles. That's the key. Mm. So looking forward, what do we think that this supply of heavier tanks and artillery might mean? Could it actually change things on the battlefield? Well, certainly that's the perception of the, of the Ukrainians. They're pressing very hard for this. Their commanding officer, General Zaluzhny, says he needs 300 battle tanks, he needs 600 infantry fighting vehicles, and he needs that artillery that I was talking about. Uh, the assessment of Western experts is probably that they need rather less than that. A hundred would probably do it. Uh, in terms of battle tanks, they're already getting the infantry fighting vehicles. Gradually, they're getting the artillery, but they need to build up that force so that it has the, 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 the sufficient force, mass, to be able to break through the Russian lines. The Russians, for their part, are saying, look, send your battle tanks. It won't make any difference. They will burn, is what the, the Russians said in, in the Kremlin the other day. That is true if... It's only the challenges that the Ukraine gets that the British are supplying, just 14 of them. But if they get the sufficient mass, 100 or more, I think Russia really has to start worrying about the situation on the battleground come the spring when a counteroffensive might be expected. All right, Rob, thank you so much for that.